Son looks to bring the ball forward. I could slide this one for Kane. It is a lovely pass. Harry Kane 1v1. And this... Uh, Kane is just unbelievable guys i'm just gonna keep it safe and go left come on ben put this in it's a brilliant penalty and it's done ben davies has scored the winner for us the stress guys the stress honestly So here we are back again with another episode of the Spurs Career Mode series. This is episode number six. Last episode, we spoke about Gareth Bale. The fact that he's on a loan spell here at Spurs. Next season, he'll be back at Madrid. And I don't really want him signing a pre-contract with any other club because I'm sure after seven months, his contract expires with Real Madrid as well. So I want to sign him and in this episode, we might pull the trigger and sign Gareth Bale for the rest of this series. We're also going to be getting through a lot of games in the Premier League as well as the Europa League. So hopefully we'll be in the month of December by the end of today's episode. The signing of Gareth Bale on a permanent deal, more Premier League games, Europa League games. It's once again going to be a fun episode. If you guys are enjoying this first career mode, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here and let's get this underway. Starting off the episode with a press conference get involved by dropping in your questions down in the comment section below first one of the day why don't you train Deli Ali's defensive stats his defensive stats are low because you're playing him in CDM or central midfield that's actually a very good shout but at the moment he's already on a development plan that we put him on to become a CM so that of course he gets better boost through sharpness and morale because that is the position we play him in in our formation so we're gonna have to wait three weeks but once that's done I am definitely going to try and improve his defensive stats and I think to do that we've got to put him on like a balanced plan or we may get more plans to use once we convert him to a central midfielder. So we're going to wait a bit and once that's done I'm definitely going to look to improve his defensive stats. Next up set up a youth academy as Spurs have had a lot of youth talents such as Harry Winks and Harry Kane as well. I would have loved to do so but in this career mode we're not really focusing on the academy because it's only a two season project. We're only going to be running this career mode until the December 4th or near around that time when FIFA 21 releases on next gen consoles it'll be a brand new game with new graphics and whatnot and we're going to be doing a career mode with a new team then so this career mode will only last a couple of seasons doesn't make sense using the youth academy all that much next up your defense is a little bit off this season will you stick with them and trust them or get a higher rated defender so you guys already know my plans we're looking to get a new defender in the january transfer window and we may be forced to sell toby alderwell to make that happen 85 rated we could fetch about 30 to 40 million for him which is my aim and with that money we could possibly sign skrinia that is my main plan but skrinia might be out of our budget we'll see how things go but Definitely looking to get a new center back in the upcoming January window. My defense, I feel, is the weak point in the team. I'm happy with the rest of my 11. So there's that. Yes, we're looking to improve the defense. With that press conference done, let's kick on. Harry Kane just does not stop scoring for me in this series. 15 goals already. And we're only, what, six episodes in? It's crazy how good Harry Kane has been. He scored multiple hat-tricks for me already. Let's hope he can keep this up. And, well, he picks up another Player of the Episode award. Okay, now time to discuss the signing of Gareth Bale. I spoke in the last episode. I wanted to make this happen. Seven months left on his loan spell. But we can sign him now and secure him for the following season. And I want to do it. And the reason why is that his value has dropped considerably to 27 million we could get him for a good deal, maybe under that value. That's what I'm going to try. Let's let's go ahead and try and sign Gareth Bale from Real Madrid for the future of this series. Let's get it done. Here we are negotiating with Real Madrid to sign Gareth Bale. Now, he's been amazing for me so far. He's scoring goals, getting assists, so I don't mind spending a chunk of money on him. So, we're going to start off with a 24 million offer. That's definitely undervaluing him, but we'll see what Zidane says. I mean, he's valued at 27 mil. Oh, they want Lucas Mora and 750,000. Oh, that's a good offer. That is a good offer, but I don't want to get rid of Lucas Mora. I actually like him. I really don't want to get rid of him. So, we'll remove Lucas Mora. Propose new transfer fee. Let's let's go up to 25 mil. 25 million for Gareth Bale I still feel is a great deal. Let's see if that works. 25 million for Bale. They want 25.1. You know what? L let's 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 stick to 25 and see just what Zidane comes back and says. I just want to see what'll happen. Will he reject it? He won't. There you go. 25 million for Gareth Bale. Zidane accepts that and we've completed negotiations and I think Gareth Bale 
I think we've still got to do the contract negotiations, so yeah, let, let's get that done. Last episode, we signed Getson Fernandez in this way, and now we're signing Gareth Bale as well on a permanent deal for next season. His wages currently are incredible. Let's offer him an important squad role. Will he accept that? He will. That is great to see. A three-year deal. Perfect. He lasts the entirety of this series. No release clause works for me. I'm definitely going to give him a wage downgrade. I'm not sure if he'll accept that, but we'll see. This is what I'll offer Gareth Bale. Let's see if he's willing to accept this. If not, we'll again negotiate with his contract and all. He does want a lot more money. We'll remove the goal bonus. We'll keep the signing bonus as is. We've definitely cut down on his wages massively, so that's awesome. 120,000 per week, and with that, Gareth Bale is now a Spurs player officially for the foreseeable future. Have a look at this, a similar message coming in from Gareth Bale. Just wanted to say I'm really happy things have been sorted out between the clubs. We've worked hard to make this happen and I'm glad we've signed Gareth Bale permanently. Last episode was pretty good for our season objectives. We made a fair amount of progress and I'm hoping we can keep it up in today's episode, scoring more with Kane and Son and maybe keeping a few clean sheets along the way. We start off the episode simulating another Europa League game, which we do end up winning 4-0. Awesome to see. Vinicius with the brace, he just comes on and scores pretty much every single game. It's crazy. Son, Hoiberg as well with goals. 4-0 win, I'll take it. I know it's a bit crazy, but I think we've already secured top spot in our Europa League group already after just four games. That is incredible. 12 points out of a possible 12. The Europa League so far has been a breeze for us. And now we go back to the Premier League. Lately, our form has been incredible in the Prem, and I'm hoping we can keep that up. A win here in our next game will put us joint second place with Chelsea. So... In fact, no, we'll go above them because we've got a better goal difference. So, can we beat Aston Villa away? That's the real question. They are in 13th place in the league and we know they've got a good team with Jack Grealish and whatnot. So, this is going to be an interesting one. Our first team is back in action for this one against Aston Villa. Kane, Dybala, Bale, all of them starting Ali and Dombele. I mean, since we did rest our first team in the Europa League, we can afford to start them now against Villa. So, they're in the lineup. We need three points here. Uh-oh, Aston Villa have gotten in behind our defence with Anwar El Ghazi. Deli Ali did some great defensive work there to get the ball away. And this is what Ali offers. Even on the attack, he can bring the ball forward, releases it for Bale. And I see Heung-Min Son making a great run. It's a brilliant cross for Son, but... Guys, Son, come on. You've got to be scoring that. How are we not 1-0 up? Bale with his weak foot delivered a fantastic cross there. Oh, Jack Grealish has broken through here. Yeah? Jack Grealish has broken through. That is phenomenal. What do I even say, guys, about that? Jack Grealish at his absolute best. He could have taken the shot earlier, but it would have been blocked by Reginald. So he did that drag back, opened up more space, and then, well, he completely did me and well scored a fantastic goal. Aston Villa have the lead. Now, we've made it a habit of conceding the first goal in game, so I'm pretty confident we'll be able to bounce back. Ali, and I already see Gareth Bale making a run. That is phenomenal from Bale, who's now signed a permanent deal with, of course, Spurs. He announces that by scoring a phenomenal goal against Aston Villa. The run in behind, inch perfect. And then the finish, even better. Off the post and in, immediate response from Spurs. Just what the doctor ordered, as they said. Gareth Bale, I mean, take a look at the run, the finish. Kane wasn't in a good spot, so the cutback wasn't really an option. Bale had to go all by himself, and well... He made that look easy, I'm not gonna lie. That's why we've signed him up for the rest of the series. Son down the wings. Gets past his man brilliantly. Heung-Min Son. And there's no catching him. Here goes Son. Could look for a cutback. Finds Dybala. Oh, that's brilliantly done from Paolo Dybala. Did you guys see that skill move? The little shimmy to, of course, open up space. And almost immediately, we've turned things around here against Villa. And we've made a 2-1. What a goal from Dybala. Son did brilliantly, but... That skill there from Dybala to just open up space slightly was b beautiful. I mean, look at that. Oh, that was so, so good. And then he took on the other defender and just slided it past the keeper. Brilliant stuff there from Paolo. And we've made it 2-1. Well, Spurs are now in control of the game. And Dombele is making a good run here. Looking now for Kane. I already see Gareth Bale making a lovely run. If I can keep it in though, that's the real question. I can. Now it's Harry Kane with a chance. Banging this one. How is Emiliano Martinez saved that? I remember scoring a similar goal with Kane in the last episode, but fair enough. That is a phenomenal save from the Aston Villa keeper. Now it's Serge Aurier making a really good run. I see Bale making a fantastic run. Gareth Bale on that left foot. Bang! 
Well, he's celebrating the extra money he's getting from that contract in the best possible way. That's exactly why we've given him a signing bonus of a million. Gareth Bale is virtually unstoppable at this point. He is in the form of his life and he continues to fire goal after goal for us. Credit to Aurea here for the assist. That was a really good pass. But look at the power behind that finish from Bale. 3-1 now against Villa. We've completely turned the game around. And now we're in cruise control. Oh, that's a good pass being played for Ollie Watkins. Good challenge coming in from Aldebaran. We still can't get the ball. Davinson does. And I'm just going to clear it away. We do get it away. And now Dybala can help start something. But that was tense. The goal difference is still only two between us and Villa. So we've still got to be careful. Although, chance now to potentially increase it. Regular going for the early cross for Son. Controls it well. That is what's happening there. Why was that not a powerful shot from Son? He literally just tapped that one towards the keeper. That should have been 4-1. Son normally would just volley that one home. So, don't know what's up with him there. Oh, so much space for Jack Grealish here. We know his quality. Looks inside for Ollie Watkins and Will Aston Villa are back in it. Jack Grealish has really put our defend defenders on the back foot here because they just can't seem to do anything against him. He assists Ollie Watkins here for this goal. And Aston Villa are back in it. Just the one goal separating the two sides now. Oh, here we go. Bale looking for Paolo. Go on. How is the keeper saved that rebound? Harry Kane is there to take it. I mean, Kane, what more can I say about him? That is now his 15th goal in the Premier League for us this season. And we've not even played like, what, 11, 12 games this season? This is the 12th game of the season and Kane is already on 15. Right place, right time always. And this goal should secure the win for us and the three points against Villa. But this man, Kane, is just always scoring every single game. It's actually remarkable to see. Now look for Son. Go on, Kane. Oh, here we go. Harry Kane banging in another goal. Son picking up an assist. And that's Kane's second of the game. He just keeps racking up goal after goal, game after game. 5-2 now against Aston Villa. This attack, man, it's too lethal. Son is not in the best of forms for scoring goals, but he's still there providing assists. And that's what you want to see. We're still hungry for more goals. Kane looking for Son. Here goes Son. It could be another goal for Hugman Son. Or potentially... A hat-trick for Harry Kane. What? What? How have I messed that up? It's full time, but that was a hat-trick for Kane. I played the through ball to Kane. It went for Bale, man. That is so dumb. We should have made it 6-2 there. Anyways, I'm not going to complain because we've won this game convincingly. Another great performance from us in the Premier League. I feel like we found a good groove in this series now. And performance after performance, we're delivering. Let's hope we can keep this up. A great win and a great performance from Gareth Bale. I mean, he it looked like we unlocked Bale after we offered him that new contract. He's super happy that he's not associated with Real Madrid anymore. It kind of feels like that. But yeah, Bale was superb. There you go. Deli Ali can now be converted to a central midfielder. Let's get that done. That's going to give him some big morale boost. And with that, it's done. Deli Ali is now a central midfielder. Can we now train him towards a more of a defensive role? Let's see. We can. A ball-winning midfielder will get his interception, stand tackle and slide tackling up. I would love that. So we're going to train him for just that for the next, what, 26 weeks, I guess, to see his overall go up. That's the plan. At the start of this season, winning the league title, definitely out of question. I mean, we were struggling so much to get a feel of this team. But now, things have changed. We're just six points off City. And it's a long season ahead and you never know. So I'm being hopeful here. But you know what? Being just six points behind first place, second in the league, definitely fills me with confidence. But the fact that my next game is against Burnley doesn't fill me with confidence. Now, normally I would simulate this game. But since it's Burnley and we've got a big history of struggling against Burnley, I want to prove myself here and beat them on FIFA 21. So first ever game against Burnley on FIFA 21 career mode. I, I, I would be lying to say if I was excited for this game. This is going to be painful. Guys, take a look at this. Already moving Ali to that central midfield position has given us a big advantage because he now gets a plus five boost on his overall, which I think is massive. And apart from that, first ever game against Burnley on FIFA 21 career mode. Of course, I'm going to go with my strongest team, but I do want to make one change. I want to give Ben White a chance to play in this one to just get him... Get used to him, because let's be real, Altavira will be gone soon. We need to start focusing on the growth of Ben White. So by giving him opportunities like this, it's going to only benefit him. So that is our team against Burnley. Let's get into it. You guys know the history between me and Burnley, and it's it's not a good one, guys. This, this club always seems to get the worst out of me, and I, I just don't want to be playing FIFA as soon as the game against Burnley comes up, because 
for some reason, I create all the chances against them and they still, they just still score a ton of goals against me and it's always frustrating. That's what happens in real life as well. Burnley are probably the most frustrating team to play against, but hopefully things will be different on FIFA 21 for me. Oh, here we go. Good space for us to attack into. Gareth Bale is broken through. Cross back in for Son. That was probably the wrong play. Should have just gone for goal with Bale himself, but Son gets the ball there. Now looking to bring it inside. Still Son looks for Dybala. Has to be a goal now. Simple finish from Paolo Dybala. 1-0 lead. Just what we needed, man, against Burnley. The bogey club for me from FIFA 20. This time around, can't strike against us because we've taken the early advantage. An assist for Jungman Son again. And have a look at that for the finish from Dybala. Nutmegs the keeper in the process. And we've got the lead. Let's go. And this definitely eases the pressure on me because Burnley, man, you let them score the first goal of the game and they're going to be a nightmare to play against. Jay Rodriguez looking in behind for Cork. He's opened up space. Hugo Lloris needs to make the save, but he can't do anything. And well, that's Burnley for you. The most annoying team to play on FIFA 21 have scored against me. It's 1-1. One, one. But Burnley this year, I don't think are that annoying because it's easier to score on FIFA 21 compared to FIFA 20. So I'm not feeling it to be a difficult and frustrating game so far. So... Let's just keep pushing. I think we've got three points that can be won here. Now it is Serge Aurier. Could go for a cross. Finds Gareth Bale. Now Dybala. Cleverly done to find Son who strikes it brilliantly. The football here on display is simply sensational. Hyungmin Son gets the goal I think he deserves. In this episode, Son has been absolutely incredible. Dybala with the assist there. But the way we move the ball from right to left again. Aurea, Bale, Dybala all involved. What an assist from Paolo as well. We get the lead back again against Burnley. It's 2-1. And right before the halftime whistle as well. So, yeah, we're doing well against Burnley this year. Jay Rodriguez on the attack. Davinson there does brilliantly. And now Deli Ali. We know he can move the ball forward and that's exactly what he's doing. Releasing it for Son as well. And before halftime, we might find ourselves with another opportunity. Son brings it inside. Looks for Dybala. Taking it wide now. Oh, he's still got it. Nah, they finally get the ball away. I was trying to push for maybe a second or a third goal actually in this game. But oh well. Burnley get it away. It's 2-1 after halftime. We're playing some great football. I want three points from this fixture. Back now for Brady. Controls it well. Regular is tracking back, but he's gotten ahead of him. Regular recovers well, holding his man, but oh my god, Hugo Lloris. Wow, that is one of the best saves I think I've seen this season. Hugo Lloris was unreal in that instance, and we avoid conceding. Oh, Ben White finds himself in a very good position. He released the ball really well for Son there. Son now looking for Bale, who's going to control it. There you go, that's done. Gareth Bale now looking to open up some space. Finds Son. Son has done his man there. That is outrageous from Hyungman Son. The dribbling and the ball control there. I think Son has finally found his spot in the team now. Because we've struggled with Son finding a way how to use him in the most appropriate manner. But since we've put the stay forward instruction on him, he's been nothing but brilliant. I mean, look at that. There twice did the defender. The keeper just didn't know what to do, whether to push forward or not. We took advantage of that. Son scores. And we're now cruising against Burnley as well. 3-1. Maybe if I can win the ball somewhere, we could start a break. Although they've got a chance and I've got a player injured inside the box. Is it Gareth Bale? I think it is. That is not good news for us. That is not good news at all. Gareth Bale, who's been in incredible form throughout this season, has now picked up an injury. Let's all hope it's not a serious one. And we've got Ben White with a knock as well. We'll bring him off for Ben Davies. We'll play him as a centre-back. And Gareth Bale will come off for Lucas Mora. That is such a bummer. I'm also going to bring on Los Elsa for Dybala. But oh my god. Bale out injured. Let's hope it's not a serious one. Full time against Spurs. We end off the game on a bad note with the injury to Bale and Ben White. All I'm hoping for is that it's not serious injuries. Ultimately, we do secure the three points here against Burnley, which is awesome to see. Oh god, we've been hit with a double whammy. A couple of injuries. First one to Gareth Bale. It's only a couple of months, but... <sighs> Maybe we shouldn't have gone this early to sign him on a permanent deal because we know Bale is going to get injured frequently. It's, it's just what happens. Two months, no Gareth Bale. Chance for Lucas Mora to shine, I suppose. Ben White, only a five-day long injury, so that's fine. He'll be back very, very soon. But Gareth Bale being out injured is going to be a real bummer because it is going to affect his overall, guys. I'm not kidding. Injuries do affect overalls on older players. So, I'm just hoping his stats don't drop. So far this season, we've done well retaining most of his stats. In fact, all of his stats. And you look at his overall stats this season. 14 games played, 5 goals, 6 assists from a position out wide. It's absolutely brilliant, man. So, 
we're really gonna miss Gareth Bale this season. Like, I mean, I know it's only a couple of months, but we're gonna miss him for that period. And you know what's the worst part? He's gonna be missing some of the biggest games of our season. I mean, look at this. He's gonna miss Everton, Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Man United again, and Everton as well away. Like, these are some big games in the Premier League that he's gonna miss, and we're gonna really struggle without him, especially recently since he's proven to be such a good output for goals. But that's how football works and we're gonna have to fire ourselves through it. Now since we've basically secured Europa League qualification, there isn't much of a point playing the Europa League group stage games. So we sim this one with our second team against Real Sociedad. We do take an L here, but it doesn't matter because we've already secured a spot in the round of 32. I mean, yeah, look at this. We're still top of the group with no chance of any team overtaking us. So yeah, we're in a good spot. Up next for us, we're simulating this one against Brighton in the Premier League. They're relegation threatened at the moment and they're playing a five at the back formation. I just do not want to play a game like this. Let's sim it with our first team and we just about pick up all three points with Ali Kane. Who else scored for us? Kane with another brace. I mean, Harry Kane's goal form right now is just nuts. He's top scorer in the Premier League and by a mile, I believe. Well, a message coming in from Steven Bergwijn and I'm not surprised. He wants more game time and he probably deserves more as well. So, what I'm thinking now, with the injury to, of course, Bale, I could play Son on the right or Dybala on the right, play Son at Cam and Bergwijn on the left. That way, we could give Bergwijn more opportunities for now. Of course, Lucas misses out then, but since Bergwijn is the one complaining, I might just do that to get his morale back up. That could be the play. Because of fitness reasons and injury issues, I've had to change the team around a tad, but I'm keeping Dybala at cam. I'm just going to be playing Son on the right, Bergwijn on the left, because Son has got a five-star week, but doesn't matter where he's playing. And Ben White starts this game as well. I was really impressed with him in the last one. So this is my Spurs team that I'm going with. Everton, of course, a lot of quality. James Rodriguez plays for them. Richarlison as well. Luis Felipe they've signed. Fair play. That's some good business they've done. A strong Everton team who are actually struggling in the Premier League. So... I don't know what to expect from this, but if we can get three points here, I'll take it. So far in this episode, we've been destroying teams and I want to keep it that way. But with, of course, the injury to Bale, I'm not sure what to expect here. So let's see what happens. Here's Kane. Looks now for Dybala. Has to be a goal and it is going to be a goal. We open the scoring against Everton. Who else but Paolo Dybala? This time, Kane, instead of scoring, turns provider and Spurs make it 1-0. Just the start we needed against a decent team like Everton. Let's keep pushing now. I want to get another big win because so far in this episode, we've been on fire. Richarlison gets past me. Richarlison is dangerous. I know how good he is because I used him in the Barca career mode. We somehow... Do not concede over there, but we make a mistake. Doherty recovers and we get the ball away. That was tense. Richarlison, man, he's probably the player I fear the most from this Everton team because I know how good he is. Yes, Kane now looking to add more to his goal. Tally looks for Dybala. Back now for Kane. Could be another goal for him. Harry Kane goes for goal. You just cannot stop the man. Harry Kane just adds goal after goal to his goal tally. He's going to break all sorts of Premier League goal records this season. I think 32 is the record that Mo Salah has for the most goals in a single Premier League season. Kane's going to touch 40 at this rate. This is incredible. What we're seeing from Kane, the way he just scores every single game, it is absurd. From inside the box, from outside the box, Kane just... Uh, it's, it's crazy how good he is for me on FIFA 21. That is yet another goal for him in the Premier League. 19 already for the season. That is outrageous. There goes Son, in behind easily, releasing it for Ali, and there you go, the, sim the simplest goal you'll see. Everton completely bamboozled here, and Ali does his classic celebration. Is that his first goal of the season? Because I don't remember seeing that celebration in this series. So, there you go, Ali gets himself a goal. Hyung Min Son can't stop assisting at this point. He scores assists and is doing everything on that right flank, so really happy that he's adjusted to the new role so quickly. Ali scores, and well, the game is over. Everton aren't making a comeback in this one. So what we're going to do now, jump this sim and see this game out. Yo, our right back has actually scored for us in this simulation. 4-0 up. Now Everton are getting absolutely clapped in this one. I'll take it though. I'd love to see. You know what? Since we've got Man United just a few games later, I'm going to sub off Kane for Vinicius. And who else do I want to rest? Um, Probably Lo Celso can... Like Dybala can come off and we'll bring on Hoiberg. And um, I'm thinking we rest maybe Son. 
Lucas Mora has pretty low on stamina, so you know what? That's all I'm gonna do for now. We'll 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 rest Kane. And that is the game done against Everton. We couldn't score any more goals, but I'll take a 4-0 win and a clean sheet as well. So this is where we end off the episode. Six points off the top after 15 games in the season, but we're in for a difficult run of games. Man United up soon, Liverpool up soon. It's gonna be interesting to see how we cope. Look at the Premier League top scorer charts. This is obscene. Kane is on 19 for the season. Oh my god. 19 in 15 that is what what even <laughs> honestly what even let's hope we can keep this up and break all sorts of records in the prem i think we're gonna fire through the kane and son objective they're on 26 for the season already but we've hit a bit of a roadblock with bale's objective because he's now suffered an injury but once again good progress with our objectives harry kane for the third episode in a row gets nominated for player of the episode along with this time Hugman son who i thought once again had a big episode. I could have included Dybala, but I just feel like Son really announced himself in this series in this one. So it's between Kane and Son. With that, guys, this is where we're wrapping up today's episode. Next episode, stakes are about to go higher and higher because it's not just Man United, North London derby in the next one. That's going to be epic. But for now, if you guys are enjoying the series, drop like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here. And well, I'll catch you all next time.